Welcome to Panda Key Learning. In this video, we are going to learn about active cell balancing using the simulation blocks. So, which topics to cover? First one is the introduction on cell balancing. Next, cell balancing types and overview model of simulation on a cell balancing active cell balancing. Next one, we will discuss the simulation results. First, why do we need a cell balancing? So, cell balancing is a one kind of a method in which voltage levels of the every individual cells connected in series are to form a battery pack that is maintained to be equal and to achieve the maximum efficiency of the battery pack. When different cells are combined together to form a battery pack, it is always made sure that they are a same chemistry and same voltage value. But once the pack is installed and subjected to charging and discharging, the voltage values of the individual cells tend to vary due to some reasons uh, which we will discuss later. This variation in voltage level causes uh, some unbalancing which will lead to one of the following problems. What is the problems of thermal runaway and cell degradation and incomplete charging of pack and incomplete use of pack energy like that. So according to all of the above possible disadvantages in consideration, we can conclude that the cell balancing would be very mandatory to utilize the battery pack to its maximum efficiency. Still, there are a few applications where the initial cost should be very low and battery replacement is not a problem in those applications, cell balancing could be avoided. But in majority of applications, including electric vehicles, a cell balancing is a very mandatory to get the maximum efficiency from the battery pack. Next one is the types of cell balancing. So, cell balancing techniques can be broadly classified into the two types. One is the active cell balancing and next one is the passive cell balancing. First one is active cell balancing. What is the active, active cell balancing? That is used in the battery management system to maintain the balance of charge among cells in the battery pack. Mainly this method involves transferring energy from cells that are fully charged to the cells that are not fully charged. Thereby ensuring that all the cells are operating within the safe operating range. It typically involves the use of the, some dedicated balancing circuit that is integrated directly into the battery management system. This balancing circuit monitors the voltage and state of charge of each cell and determines whether any cell record additional charging. If so means the circuit activate the switches that connect the cells in parallel after that allowing energy to flow from the cells with the higher charge levels to the cells with the lower charge levels. So these are all the several benefits of the active cell balancing by ensuring that all the cells are charged to the same level. This active cell balancing can extend the life of the battery pack and also it improves its overall performance. It can also help to prevent overcharging or over discharging of the individual cells which can reduce the risk of the battery's failure and also improve safety. So, however, this active cell balancing can be uh, become a more complex and expensive than passive cell balancing. So, next one is a passive cell balance. What is a passive cell balancing? This is also one kind of the method that can be used in the battery management system to equalize the voltage levels of individual cells within the battery pack. It is a very simpler and cost-effective uh, method alternative for the active cell balancing. Because it does not recover any complex circuitry or a control algorithm like that. So mainly this passive cell balancing, resistive elements such as a resistor or diodes are connected in parallel with, uh, with each battery cell in the pack. These resistive elements can act as a shunt for, for the excessive charge uh, after that allowing the cells with higher voltage levels uh, to, to distort some of their energy. So this process continues until the voltage levels across the cell cells are balanced. When the cell has a higher voltage than the rest means more current flows through the corresponding resistive element. It will dissipating excess energy as a heat. So this causes the cell's voltage to decrease allowing it to reach a balanced state with the lower voltage cells. So conversely the cells with the lower voltage cells uh, voltage levels experiences a very less current flow limiting energy dissipation and allowing them to charge up. So one advantage of the passive cell balancing is a very uh, it is a very simple simple simpler one. It recovers a fewer additional components and also it uh, generally less expensive to implement compared to the active cell balance. This is our overview simulation model of our 
uh, active cell balancing here we take uh, two batteries and here we take a resistive a resistive element and inductive element and capacitive element and switch and diodes so next simulation is so first we will enter into the matlab so go to the matlab software this is our active cell balancing circuit so mainly this balancing circuit so here you can see the two batteries and this is the cell 1 and cell 2 so mainly this balancing is based on the inductor inductor is an energy storage element if cell 1 has the highest soc means s1 will be turned on during the first half of the pwm cycle and the energy is stored in the inductor during the negative half cycle the s1 goes off and the energy in the inductor is transferred to the s2 uh, uh, transferred to the cell 2 through the diode d2 so the opposite is true means if cell 2 has the highest soc so the amount of the transferred energy in a single cycle depends on the rate of discharge as well as the cell equalization speed next here we take a one matlab function so double click on the matlab function so we are going to feed a one code here so this is our matlab function and this matlab function takes a three inputs. what is the inputs soc1 and soc2 and pw1 so soc1 comes from the battery 1 soc2 comes from the battery 2 and pw is a input signal and returns a two outputs so what is the output switch s1 and switch s2 so the purpose of this function is to perform active cell balancing so which involves equalizing the soc of the individual cells in the battery pack by transferring a charge between them using a switch so here the function first initializes s1 and s2 with this then it checks about the some condition so what is the condition it checks about that the soc of the second cell that means the soc2 less than soc of the first cell that means soc1 and whether pwm value is greater than 0 if both the conditions are true means the function sets equal to the value of the pwm so this will activate the switch one allowing charge to transfer from the first cell to the second cell so if the first condition is not true the fun can the function checks whether the soc of the cell soc of the cell one soc one less than soc two and whether the pwm value is greater than 0 if both conditions are true means the function sets uh, the switch s2 will be the pwm that means is s2 equal to 1 so this activates the switch to allowing charge to transfer from the second cell to the first cell if neither the condition is true both the switches are deactivated that means set to 0 so note this functions assumes that the switches are activated using the pulse width modulation which mainly this pulse width modulation uh, allows for a control of the amount of charge transferred between the cells so mainly this pwm is specified as the input of the pulse width modulation so we are going to feed into this uh, matlab function here so here i will take it as a one pwm generator that means a two level so in active cell balancing the switches are controlled using a pulse width modulation signal to transfer charge between the cells This PWM signal can be generated using a two uh, using a very different techniques such as a single phase two level PWM or multi phase PWM. PWM. So double click on this. Here I will take take it as a two pulses. That means a single phase two level PWM. In this diagram we mention uh, here as a single phase two level PWM that is used to control the switches. So this technique is generates a PWM signal with the two voltage levels. That means a high voltage and a low voltage. That switches between uh, between them at a some fixed frequency. So here the duty cycle of the signal determines uh, the amount of the signal spins at each voltage level, which controls the amount of charge transferred between cells. So here the need for a single phase two level PWM in this diagram it is likely due to our simplicity only, and also it is a ease of implementation. Mainly, this technique is commonly used in the battery management systems because it recovers the fewer components and is easier to control than more complex PWM techniques. So, regarding the constant value of 0.5 for the PWM duty cycle, 
This value is likely chosen uh, based on a some specific performance of the system. Duty cycle of 0.5 means that the PWM signal spends an equal amount of time at each voltage level, which results in an equal amount of charge being transferred between the cells. However, the optimum duty cycle for active cell balancing may vary depend on some characteristics of the cells of under the battery pack. This is our overall model. Here we have to take a so first cell. This is a battery one. I will take it as a initial SOC charge as a 50%. And that means a 5-0. And battery 2 initial state of charge as a 30-30. So nominal voltage is 3.6 and 3.6. Initial voltage only. Wait. So this one for a 50% and this one for a 30%. So I will take it as a stop time is a 20 seconds. We are going to run this simulation and let's see our simulation results. By using this active cell balancing, what we get the SOC values after. So here you can see the value of the SOCs. Yes, exactly is a 57.24 and 57.24. By using this active cell balancing, this is for SOC1 uh, for the say battery 1 and this is for SOC for the battery 2. That means a cell 1 and cell 2 after using this active cell balancing. So for buying this pro simulation project, check the description box below. From now on, we will be consistently sharing MATLAB simulation projects on our Panda Key Learning channel. Get in touch with us. Check the description box below. Thank you all.